Do some guys regret losing their girlfriend? Um, well, I guess it depends. But I will tell you this. Some men actually do regret losing someone in their life. And there's some men that could care less that they've lost someone or let someone go. Now, we have to explore some of the reasons of why. I got something in my tooth. <laughs> we have to explore the reasons why someone might regret losing a person, but more importantly, why they would end a relationship with someone. I think if we're going to dive into that, we have to differentiate between short-term relationships and those that are more significant relationships. And what I mean to say, someone who's been together for one year, two years or longer versus those short-lived relationships. Because I think if we think, if we're looking at some of those relationships that have only been a few weeks or a few months, um, the reality is, is there wasn't enough trust established. There wasn't enough attachment established in that early period to really warrant regretting losing something, I would think. If there hasn't been enough connection established, enough attachment, then highly unlike they're going to regret losing someone. But certainly a more established relationship, that would happen. But let me ask you, ladies, does it really matter if a man regrets losing a relationship? Do you really care? If you're honestly caring if he regrets it, I want to ask you, I want you to ask yourself, is that your ego trying to puff yourself up? And I'm not suggesting that it is, but I have noticed that that has happened for a lot of women that they feel some sort of satisfaction if the man is feeling some regret and then they will reject the man if he comes back. Now, will a man come back if, if they were in a relationship with someone and they regret it? Well, we're going to explore that in a moment. However, I think it's more important to explore, especially for those of us in midlife, what causes most breakups? What causes most breakups? Now, we have to differentiate between the three types of people who are actively dating. There are the users, the spenders, and the growers. Now, I know many of you, and I roughly say the users are about 20%, spenders are 60%, growers are 20%. I was about to say, I know many of you covet, you desire that man who's the grower and the builder. This is the man who definitely wants a significant relationship. Now, the users, those men are the love bombers, the players. Those people come on strong. They're only in it for the sex. Okay, that's probably about 20% of the population. The real challenging population is what I call the spenders. These are men that want occasional companionship, occasional connection, occasional sex without any real deep commitment. This is when women find themselves in situations like situationships or casual relationships or friends with benefits. Yes, there's a significant percentage of men who find themselves in the spender category. So you know, this is a, a group of people where you might share the same values, but and you might even be able to blend lives with one another. The challenge is, is this person, in? does he have the emotional capacity to be in a significant relationship? And that's something that's very challenging for those of us in midlife, okay? So... I want to explore what causes the breakups to determine if it's if he's really going to circle back and come back into this relationship. And for those that are in the spender categories, the most significant thing that causes the spenders to end a relationship is that the ground underneath him doesn't feel solid. He's got some sense of baggage or luggage in his life, and he cannot see himself blending lives with you. For those of us in midlife, this is for the over 40, 45 category, this has got to be one of the most significant challenges in a relationship is that capacity to blend lives with one another. By the way, it's getting all hot in here, so I want to turn on the air conditioning for one second, so bear with me. Okay, thanks for bearing with me. I was getting rather hot in here. Um, so I want you to think about blending lives for a second, because the, as I, I was about to say, most of us come with some level of baggage in our lives, okay? Now, that baggage can include having a contentious relationship with an ex. For some people, raising children might feel like either baggage to them or baggage to someone else. That's a significant one. 
people that have health issues. For those of us in midlife that are in the over 50 category, this is when our physical ailments start to creep in. What if he's got some issues in his professional life? Maybe you have some issues in your professional life. This is where blending lives becomes a real challenge for so many people who are actively in the dating marketplace. And it's one of the primary reasons what causes relationships to end is there, there's an inability to blend your lives together. So I think it's really important that when you're in the early stages of dating that you do a much better job of vetting for compatibility. This is what I teach in my private coaching. It's called radical honesty, pre-qualifying your prospect. And if you need some support with that, check out the link below to a free discovery call with me or go to coaching or jonathanasleycoaching.com. This is where I can help you determine, is this person emotionally mature enough to be in relationship? Do they have the skills to be in relationship? Are your lifestyles compatible with one another? I would say well over a third of the calls I get for coaching are women wanting me to evaluate the relationship to determine, is this a relationship where we can blend lives together? See, I think many of you women have adopted the fantasy. Well, if we love each other, everything will magically work out. Because if I just sit in my feminine energy, he'll come and claim me. Ladies, you can sit back in your feminine energy all day long, but if you're with a user or spender, it doesn't matter. He's he may come back. He may regret losing you. He may come back. But can he establish a real significant relationship with you? That remains to be seen with those men who are the users and the spenders. So I want to spend a few minutes talking about if a grower will come back. So what causes a grower to end a relationship? Um, sometimes... When two people are angry and then they're, the, they're, they're in the heat of the moment, sometimes men will end a relationship because there's a real aggravation going on. But that usually, if it's the heat of the moment type of ending, that guy usually is going to circle back rather quickly. That's the usual case. Now, for those two people that had a deeper connection, and let me be clear when I say deeper connection, because many of you are swimming in the fantasy of what I've observed as cyber relationships, cyber relationships. Many of you are in a relationship with your smartphone connecting to the other person, and you're not physically spending the significant amount of time together to build trust and commitment. <clears throat> How is trust and commitment built? It's through the integration of each other's lives, it's social activities, it's hobbies, it's mutual interests, it's spending time with family and friends. And by the way, the reason why I repeat myself over and 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 over again in my videos is so this sinks in. Because many of you, as I said before, have adopted the fantasy that lust or limerence equals love, and that's not the case. So if two people have established a deep connection, Fear can oftentimes cause a man to break up with you. And in a moment of anger, people will end a relationship or in the moment of fear. And in that moment of fear, oftentimes it's a fear of possibly disappointing you, letting you down. And if that's the case, he might end a relationship only to circle back. Now, according to John Gray, he calls this the rubber band effect. And the rubber, in the rubber band effect, it's usually within the first six weeks to 12 weeks of a breakup, he will circle back to the relationship. The real question I invite you to ask for yourself is what are you going to do if a man does circle back after ending a relationship, if he does want you back? What are you going to do differently? What are you going to require of this person to consider taking him back? Now, I, let's ponder that for a second. I really want you to think about that for a second. What do you need to feel safe and secure? Because these days, a lot of guys end a relationship and they'll say things like, can we just be friends? Can we just remain friends? And what that means is I want you in my orbit. I want you in my life. I want to be able to reach out at my beck and call to have sex with you, but I am not going to give you any emotional investment or any true commitment ever in my life. That's most likely the case when someone wants to keep you in their orbit as friends. And let me ask you something. Do you really need to collect new friends in your life? And if this person, 
I mean, listen, there are some significant cases where two people end a relationship and it was, but they weren't right for each other, but they developed a sense of family to one another. They've developed a sense of family. And that's okay if they remain in each other's lives. I don't see anything wrong with that. But for those that are end a relationship and they're immediately on the dating apps, that's a person that's probably doesn't have the emotional maturity. He didn't have the emotional maturity in the relationship and it's bleeding out because he needs that fix as soon as the relationship ends. So I came, I wanted to say, what are you going to do when someone ends a relationship and they circle back? What are you going to do? What are you going to do differently if this happens? What do you what type of agreements do you want to establish with this person before you consider taking them back? Because a lot of couples go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it doesn't matter if he regrets you, it doesn't matter if he comes back. What you have to establish are the rules of engagement. You have to establish what are we really doing here and how are we going to commit to one another? You know, the sad thing is I was just having a conversation with um, a gentleman today. Uh, he's in a relationship, 60 years old, and we were talking about a group of other 60-year-old men. They're all in significant relationships. They live with their partner. Now, some of them have lived with their partners for six years. At least they, and this person is living with his partner as well, at least they made the commitment to live with one another. That's a pretty big commitment, especially if two people put each other on the lease. That's a real big commitment. What commitment are you going to need for yourself to accept a person back? And you can only answer that for yourself. But I think one of the real issues we're plagued today in the dating marketplace is the, the, the benefits of marriage seem to be you know, skewed because of divorce. And I think there's a lot of emotional baggage for so many people. They're so reluctant to get remarried. And yet the, the Institute of Marriage was something to actually covet. And yet so many people are afraid because in some cases, they're not able to blend lives together. In some cases, they don't share the same values with one another, or they don't have the emotional maturity handle, to handle conflicts and differences with ease so they can establish a long-term loving relationship. This is what we're plagued with. These are some of the questions I invite you to ask yourself. What do you really want? What do you really want? Do you want a partnership? And what does partnership look like? Is it living together? Is it getting married? And if this is the case, then what are you going to establish in the early stages to determine if you're a fit with one another? These are the questions I invite you to ask yourself because the reality is, is do men regret losing a good woman? Who cares if he regrets it? And who cares if he comes back? You want to find yourself in a position where you don't even have to be asking yourself these questions. How do you build a healthy, happy relationship? Those are the types of things I invite you to start asking for yourself. And by the way, I've got a plethora of books listed in below. It's under Jonathan Recommended Books. In the show notes here, I, by the way, I give you so many resources that can change your life. And that's what I invite you to do for yourself is to get a better handling of who you are and who is really right for you. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Please post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts.